final artificial intelligence use case applied to marketing is about dynamic pricing. So I believe this strategy is a bit more complex than the others. But anyways, let's quickly have a look what this is all about. And let's go to the next slide. So on the left hand side, you've got the static pricing model, which we have always uh, learned about in economics. Okay, this is what we learn in economics books and uh, lessons. So we've got a single price point here, number one. And with this single price point based on the demand on the quantity demanded, we are going to have a certain amount of revenue, which is this green square. Whereas with dynamic pricing, we are going to have multiple price points, as you can see, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, we can have endless amount of price points and they can really increase your revenue because they will uh, allow you to capture all of the profit to be made in that market. So they will be able to really show the prices towards the customers that are probably going to be willing to pay those prices. So of course, in order to do that, we gotta, we're going to have, uh, we're going to need an, an, a really smart algorithm, a really smart software machine that is going to predict who is willing to pay what, you know, because you cannot expect to, to have a student to, to pay for the highest price steer because usually a student doesn't have uh, any disposable income or very little disposable income because he's usually studying, he's usually, he's usually paying uh, university tuition fees. Whereas like uh, if you are 35 years old and you have got your, you know, your, your, your salary, you're much more willing to pay for a higher price. Well, you know, it's not that you're much more willing, is that you have a higher disposable income. So that implies that you might be available to able to pay for something more. Now, that's what a lot of uh, hotel companies do what a lot of uh, airplane companies do such as you know Ryanair, EasyJet they try to gather as much data as possible about you they once you once you create an account with them like what you do with booking.com or when you do with the Ryanair again they will gather as much value as possible on you based on your on your searches based on your purchases based on your really on all of your history they will create a buyer persona and what they will say okay i think this guy alessio i think is pretty wealthy but uh, I, I, I wouldn't share with him i don't know uh, a price number one i would say i would share price number three okay but or or instead i would say oh i think this alessio guy uh, i think is, is is still it's at school it might be not be uh, probably it's it's not gonna be able to afford uh, a very uh, lux luxury vacation. Instead of showing him the villa or the five star hotel, why not we show why why not, why not showing him like a three star hotel and so and so on or like just like a dorm room or 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 in a hostel, you know? Again, that, that's not specifically what it is, but again, that was just an example. They will try to or maybe for the exact same. Sp Price for, for the exact same service. So let's say there's 10 spots left uh, on, on a plane and you land on the website and uh, perhaps instead of showing you the price number one, they will show you price number three. Whereas if uh, another user who, who's perhaps an entrepreneur and they can understand that basically they will not they will not know base, base they will you because once you log in on um, on your account, you will not say, okay, I am an entrepreneur, I earn, I don't know, $50,000 per year, I have a house, I've got a boat, I've got, you know, you don't say all of these things, of course, you never ever say those things, but the algorithm is smart enough to understand that, okay, so based on your searches, if you're looking for homes that are more than $300 per night as price in terms of for your vacation, or if you're looking for um, flights, that are you know like intercontinental so that you're flying often and you are usually paying a lot of a lot of money for each and every ticket if you're always looking for upsells you know for more services so at the end of the day you spend more what the algorithm is going to infer is that uh, um, 
is, is that you're wealthy, is that you've got a lot of disposable income and that you are uh, able to afford a high price tier. So perhaps in the next time you will go and search with the exact same account that you've been searching before, they will know that they can afford to try and show you a higher price than the average, okay? Or a lower price than the average or just at the average. So that is what uh, dynamic pricing is. And in my opinion, it's really powerful, uh, pretty difficult to do that. But here's the thing, we've got platforms. Platforms are popping up for dynamic pricing and I think they will pop up even more in the future because again, it is such a valuable thing to do. If you have got a, a data science team with you or if you're a data science uh, engineer yourself, that is definitely going to uh, make it work. Because as you can see, get inside your customers' minds. And as you can see, you can look at, uh, uh, again, would they, would they will know what will trigger each shopper to purchase. So they will know it based on, on, the, on the algorithm, based if you are, again, one of that kind of buyer persona or the other buyer persona, based on, again, the device and environment that you're looking for, the customer behavior, the name Go network. So that's something uh, for, for their software and then the website and product data. Okay, so similar visits, purchase trends, behavior trends, product price, content analysis, so on and so forth. Everything that I've already mentioned before. So having said, I think dynamic pricing is also really good. And I hope you guys have enjoyed these lectures. We're gonna go through the benefits and of, of using AR marketing, the, challenging, the challenges of using AR marketing and also the future trends projections for AI marketing. Now, I hope that is helpful to you guys. I hope you are uh, having as much value as possible. And please, if you could leave me a feedback, I would be so grateful for you so I can create a better course for the upcoming students. And really feel free to leave me a review, you know, both good or bad, just, I would be so grateful to hear that. So having said that guys, I'll see you in the next lectures.